Welcome back. Today we're going to look at a circuit analysis technique called nodal analysis. As we've been going in our study here, we've learned about the three fundamental laws of electrical circuits, KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law. And as we've been solving the circuits to this point, we've been looking at a circuit and finding places where we can write KCL at nodes and write KVL around closed paths and applying Ohm's law to resistors. And we just kind of apply the laws wherever we see they fit in kind of a random ad hoc fashion. And this is terribly inefficient. As the circuits get more and more complicated, you can envision that you could uh, start writing laws and work on it for hours before you actually find all the relationships that allow you to actually find the voltages and the currents and the powers that you're looking for. So what we need is a, a, a deterministic, efficient algorithm for solving, finding voltages and currents and powers, solving circuits. And that's what nodal analysis is. Nodal analysis is a systematic application of KCL to solve circuits. So we are going to have a recipe for writing KCL equations and that's going to allow us to find voltages in the circuit by applying KCL. And so it's just a recipe, it's an algorithm. It will tell you what to do and this, this nodal analysis recipe actually gives you the minimum number of equations you need to solve a circuit. So it's really worth learning. As a matter of fact, this is nodal analysis is the foundation for most computerized circuit solution software packages. So this is a, a technique that you can always rely on. It works really, really well. And let's just dive in. So the step one in the nodal analysis recipe that I have uh, formulated is that we need to determine the number of nodes in the circuit. So we're going to count the number of nodes in the circuit and there are going to be n of them for our circuit. Then we're going to pick one of the nodes and it's going to be the reference node. So pick one of those n nodes to be the reference node. That's step two. Step three, the remaining n minus one node volt nodes need to have a voltage defined and the voltages for these node voltages, n minus one node voltages, are going to be defined with respect to the reference node. So we define them with respect to the reference node. So that is the node voltages are going to be the positive, the plus polarity mark and the reference node will be the minus polarity mark. Step four, go to each of these n minus one nodes and write KCL write KCL at each of the n minus 1 nodes. So there's going to be n minus 1 KCL of equa equations. And step 5, when you get done, you have these n minus 1 KCL equations. They're going to be in terms of n minus 1 unknowns, that is the n minus 1 node voltages. And then you simply solve the system of equations. How do you solve them? Well, any of the methods you've learned in your math courses, linear, you know, um, inverse matrices, back substitution, Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is really, really useful. And so any method you've learned to solve systems of equations. All right, let's just go and jump in and do an example. So here's the first circuit we're going to solve. And so the, st the first step is step one, determine the number of nodes in the circuit. So counting the nodes, you know, the, the colored markers become handy again. So we can start coloring the nodes. There's one node. And here's a second node and then we can form a third node. We'll make this one green. Alright, so how many nodes do we have in the circuit? Well, there are obviously three nodes, and so I always in nodal analysis like to write that in the corner so I don't forget. So n equals three. So if I know I have three nodes, I'm going to expect two equations and two unknowns. So if we determine the number of nodes, n equals three. Step two, define a reference node. Now you can pick any one of these three nodes to be the reference node, but it turns out it's a lot it makes the circuit, does the equations become a little bit easier if you pick a reference node which is the node that has the most number of elements connected to it. And so you see the green node has four different elements connected to it. The other two nodes have three elements connected to it. So I'm going to pick the green node to be my reference node. It turns out if you do this, the equations will be slightly simpler. You can pick any of the any nodes to be the reference, but I choose the one that's the, the most complicated node to be the reference, just to make the equations a bit simpler. And as you do these in, in practice, you'll see what I'm what I mean. Step number three, define the n minus one n minus one node voltages with respect to the reference node. So here we have a voltage, and so we'll define a voltage plus with respect to the reference node, and we'll call this V1. And so this is node 1. If you want to, you can even write it up here, node 1. All right, and node 1 has a voltage. We'll call it V1, and it's defined with respect to the reference node. The second node has a voltage. 
we'll define it with respect to the reference node. We'll call this node 2. All right, and this node voltage is called V2. So step 3 is to find the voltages at the n minus 1 nodes, two nodes in this case, with respect to the reference. So the reference becomes, the reference node is what all the voltages are referenced against. Step number four, write KCL at each of the N minus one nodes. Now when I write KCL, I always write KCL leaving the node. I write KCL leaving the node. So the first thing we're going to write KCL at node one. KCL at node one. And I'm going to write the current, the KCL's leaving, the current's leaving the node. So what is the current leaving the node right there? Well that's going to be a minus three amperes. What's the current leaving the node this direction? Well, the current is going down, and notice that it's directed into the positive terminal of V1, so the passive sign convention holds, so this current is going to be given to us by Ohm's law, V over R. V1 is the voltage over 2. And then I need the current leaving node 1 in this direction, and so I'm looking for the voltage plus on the left, minus on the right, and what is this voltage? So come over here to the side, a little sidebar. We can write KVL starting in the bottom left, minus V1, plus V question mark plus V2 equals zero. And then if I solve for V question mark, which is the one I want, we see that's going to be V1 minus V2. And so if I'm looking for the current going in this direction, I know that I have a voltage V1 minus V2 over 5. And those are all the currents leaving node 1, so KCL says that has to be equal to zero. Then we'll come along and we need to write KCL for the other node, KCL number 2. All right, so again, all the current's leaving the node. What's the current leaving node 2 there? Well, that's a plus minus 2, because it's going the, the same direction. Then I'm looking for the current leaving node 2 there. And I have a voltage. The current is going down. It's directed into the positive terminal. That's why I write KCL leaving, because it always sets up the passive sign convention for me automatically. So we get V2, and it's over a 1 ohm resistor. And then I'm looking for the current going in this direction, leaving the node. And so if the current is moving to the, to the left, I'm looking for the voltage plus to minus for the passive sign convention. That's the negative of the voltage we found earlier, so that's going to be V2 minus V1, and that's over going through a 5 ohm resistor. And KCL says that equals 0. And so here we have two equations and two unknowns at the conclusion of step four. And you can take these and rearrange them and, and collect all the terms and make it look prettier. And then you're going to end up with a system of equations, two equations and two unknowns. And before you dive in and start solving that, you do want to probably check a couple things. Notice this 5 ohm resistor. The 5 ohm resistor has a current that we had counted for in both KCL equations. And so go back and look before you start solving. Go back and check this out and make sure you did it properly. The current going to the right is this term right there. And then the current going to the left is appears in the other equation. And of course those are the exact same current, they're just the different directions, the two different names for the same current. And notice that these two current, these two terms are exactly the same except for their negatives of each other. And they should be because it's the same current with opposite directions. So I'll always go back and check that before I dive in. That's just a little quick way to make sure you didn't mess up at least that part of the equation. So you have two equations and two unknowns and you can solve that by Kramer's rule, back substitution, inverse matrices, whatever you want. And so I challenge you to go uh, practice those, review those, and, 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 and get efficient at it because you're going to do it a lot. And then for this circuit, when you solve for this, you'll find V1 is 5 volts and then V2 is going to be 2.5 volts. Now these are the two node voltages V1 and V2 and so maybe the question is hey what's the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor? Maybe the question was posed at the beginning hey what is the voltage plus to minus and we called you know what is this voltage V question mark? Well we said V question mark is V1 minus V2. Once you have the node voltages then we know that we can find that simply when we 5 minus 2.5 all right, and that's going to be two and a half volts. Maybe they, maybe someone asked you to find the voltage plus to minus across the five ohms the other direction. It's going to be minus two and a half volts. Once you have the no, n minus one node voltages, you can now find any voltage in the circuit, and then of course with those you can go back and find powers. You can across resistors, you can find currents. Once you have all the node voltages, you've really kind of busted the problem apart, and you can get anything you want. All right, let's do another example. So null analysis. 
Example number two. So here we have a circuit, and if we take a look at it, the first step is to figure out how many nodes we have. And so I won't color these because hopefully it's pretty obvious, and we see that we have a node on the bottom, we have a node on the top, and so we have n equals 2. All right, and so from nodal analysis, I know from my recipe I expect to find one equation and one unknown. So step two, select the reference node. All right, uh, these are both the same complexity, so we'll just select the bottom. And actually, you see here we've already got a voltage on the circuit's been defined for us, so let's just go with that since someone's already drawn, drawn V on there. So we'll make the lower node the reference. Step three, define the node voltages, the n minus one node voltage with respect to the reference node. Well, there's only one other node left, and the voltage has already been defined for us. It's right there. It's V. So no need to define it because one's already been given to us. Step three, write KCL for each of the n minus one nodes, in this case our upper node. So we need to write KCL. KCL. And I'll write KCL leaving. KCL leaving. So what is the current going down this direction? Then that's going to be a minus 24 milliamps. What's the current going down this direction? Well, we have a voltage V, and it's across a 6K ohm resistor. So I'm doing a, an equation here that's, that is consistent in terms of milliamps and K ohms. Currents are milliamps, and resistances are K ohms. And what is the current going down in this direction? Well, it's a controlled source, and, and some people make a big deal about controlled sources. It's just a current source. It just happens to have a function for its value. So I'm looking for the current that's opposite the arrow as drawn. So that's going to be minus, and the value of that current source is minus 2ix. So just check your arrow and write down whatever that is and keep on going. And then what is the current leaving the node here? And that's going to be across the current through a resistor. And so we have a voltage V, and it's across a, going through a 10, 2k ohm. And that equals zero. So here you have our one equation and, and two unknowns. So KCL predicts one equation and one unknown, but here we have a second unknown. And so the question is, why do we have this other unknown? Well, it's because of this controlled source. And so the controlled source has introduced the has introduced this new unknown. And so we need to have the controlled source kind of give us uh, another equation to help us solve this. And so the problem is we don't know what I x is but Ix has been given to us right here. And so we see Ix. What is Ix? We look at the, the diagram. Well, it is the current that flows opposite the current in the 2K ohm resistor. So I know it is going to be negative V over 2. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. Nodal analysis only gave us one equation, but then the, the controlled current source gave us the second equation. So again, we have a system of equations to solve. And when we solve this, you can solve for V. And we'll find, when you solve this, V is going to be 14.4 volts. And once you have that voltage, you can go back and find any current you want anywhere, any powers you need. And then you really everything becomes pretty straightforward at that point. All right, let's jump in and solve another one. This one's a bit more complicated. And so the first step of null analysis is determine the number of nodes in the circuit. And this one's fairly complicated, and it's maybe hard to see. So let's get our little colored markers out, and let's start figuring out what's going on. And so we'll just start coloring here. All right. And when you come down through here, OK, and there's the orange node. OK, and then we'll start with a different color. And we'll just start coloring things in and see that that wire hops over, so that just passes underneath. I think that's all of those. And then we'll get the pink color. Start filling. And the colored markers become really, really handy. See here, we hop over. OK. And then lastly, we have the little aqua color that we'll put down here. And so we see when we draw our colors on the, on the circuit, we have n equals 4. There are four nodes in this circuit. So I would expect to have three equations and three unknowns. And another way to solve this circuit, you know, maybe it's still kind of tough to see. One thing you can do is you can, you can redraw the circuit. So you can take each of these colors, and you can make a dot below and we did uh, something similar to this before and then you can just start drawing in 
the elements as they exist, and so from orange to yellow I see I have a resistor, and orange to yellow I see I have a current source, and so forth, and from yellow to, to pink there's a resistor, and you start drawing it in and filling in all the elements and making sure you keep the directions, you keep the colors on the correct sides. So when you do that, you'll get a circuit that looks something like this, and I put the colors on the on the circuit and then I'm going ahead and pick the lower node, the node at the bottom to be our reference node, and that's simply because it has a four elements connected to it. And in the absence of a better reason, I always pick my reference at the bottom. So the notage, voltage V1 is really like this, but as you can see, this is going to get really cluttered when I start doing this over and over and over again. The minuses start collecting at the reference. You got stuff written all in your circuit and it gets really, really messy. And so what we often do is we will instead of writing the polarity markings and the voltages on the circuit, we will simply write V1, V2, and V3. And what this means is this is the voltage V1 plus with respect to the reference. This up here, V2 up here means this is the voltage plus with respect to the reference. V3 here means this is the voltage V3 plus with respect to the reference. So it's a little bit tidier way of writing the voltage without cluttering up the graph quite as much. Remember, voltage always is defined with your polarity markings. So they're still there. We're just kind of suppressing them on the, on the diagram. So now we're ready to start writing our equations. We have determined the number of the nodes in the circuit. We have n equals 4. All right, so we have three node voltages with respect to the reference, so we expect to write three KCL equations. So let's get started. KCL for number one, and I always write KCL leaving. So what is the current leaving in this direction? It's minus, since I'm opposing the arrow, minus a minus eight. What's the current going in this direction? As we saw last time, this is always going to be V1 minus V2. It's the node we're at minus the node we're going to, and that's going to be over a one-third ohm resistor. And what is the current going up in this direction? Well, I'm opposing the arrow, so it's minus a minus 3. And then what is the current going around this way? Well, that's going to be, we're going from V1 to V3, and we're doing that over a 1 fourth ohm resistor. And that's all of them for node 1, and that must equal 0. And then at node 2, KCL for node 2. What is the current going in this direction? And so we are at V2 going to V1 over one third. What's the current going this direction? Well, it's the right, so it's a plus, a minus three, since the arrows agree. What's the current heading off to the right? Well, V2 goes to V3, that's the difference, and that's going through a one half ohm resistor. And what is the current going down? And remember, this voltage V2 is defined with respect to the reference, so we have a voltage V2 to the reference through a 1 ohm resistor, and that must equal to 0. And then we need to write KCL for e node 3. So what's the current going in this direction? Well, we're agreeing with the arrow, so it's plus a minus 25. And what's the current going off this way? Well, it's to the reference, so the voltage V3 is across that 1 fifth ohm resistor. And what's the current heading off in this direction? Well, that's V3 going to V2 over, it's a one half ohm resistor, and then the current going up in this direction is V3 going off to V1 and over, uh, going through a one fourth ohm resistor, and KCL says that has to equal zero. So here have our three equations and three unknowns. So the next step would be to solve, but before we solve, I want to go back and double check and make sure that the currents that are common to two equations are consistent. That's just kind of a quick check. Doesn't guarantee you, you got the right equation, but it definitely ch gives you a way to check some of the terms. And so the first one is this current right here, and it appears in, in two equations. And so this is going to be V1 minus V2 over one third. And here we have V2 minus V1 over one third. So they are indeed are negatives of each other. And then we have this current and this current are in two equations V2 minus V3 over a half, and V3 minus V2. So those are negatives of each other. And then we also have this current, and it appears in two equations, and that's V1 minus V3 over 1 fourth, and V3 minus V1 over. So those are, and so those are all consistent. So now we have three equations and three unknowns, 
and then take uh, break out your calculator, your computer, or Kramer's rule, and solve these guys, and you'll find the answer is V1 is going to be 1 volt, V2 is 2 volts, and V3 will equal 3 volts. And once you have the voltages V1, V2, and V3, you can, of course, can find the, if you need to or want to find the value, you can find the V1 to V2 voltage, you can find the V3 to V2 voltage, you can simply find those by taking the difference of the node voltages you found. And so with, with nodal analysis, you get all of the node voltages in the circuit, and then with that, you can find any other voltage you want, and then all the powers and all the currents and everything you're looking for. So just a quick recap. Nodal analysis is a systematic application of KCL to solve circuits. Five steps. Determine the number of nodes in the circuit, and that will be in. Select one of the nodes to be the reference node. Pick the node that is the most complicated, if you will, and for the reference node that tends to make the equations a little bit simpler. Step three, take the n minus one voltage nodes that are left and define node voltages with respect to the reference. Step four, at each of those n minus one nodes, you need to write KCL. And then you now have a system of n minus 1 equations and n minus 1 unknowns, and then so solve that using any way you want. And then what that does is that gives you the n minus 1 node voltages. And upon the, getting those node voltages, you can find any value you're looking for by going back and using KVL, KCL, and Ohm's Law. But nodal analysis will break the problem open and give you all the tools you need, and any number you're looking for should be a fairly quick uh, calculation to get, get anything you want. That's nodal analysis. Commit this to memory. We'll come back next time and we'll look at nodal analysis a little bit more and find uh, more complicated circuits.